So a few weeks ago, I made a purchase that I was really wanting to make and I was kind of putting off, but ultimately it made my editing workflow a lot faster and a lot smoother and honestly more enjoyable. So you might already know what we're talking about today based off the title of this video, but I finally bought an M1 Mac Mini. So before we get into specs and why I bought it, I figured it'd be helpful to know a little bit about me. So I'm a freelance cinematographer and an editor. I've been doing this since 2015. I'm constantly behind the computer and lately I've been working with Samuel Elkins and we're doing about eight videos a month. And they all range from different styles of videos from really simple Patreon videos to more built up YouTube videos to our 45 minute to an hour long field trip series. So needless to say, I have a ton of work on my plate and I really need a workhorse of a computer. And I was thinking about building a PC and I didn't really want to leave the Apple ecosystem. So I knew I wanted to stay here and I was shopping for a 27 inch Intel iMac, but I really wasn't wanting to commit to it. I knew that the specs were pretty good, but it wasn't that big of an increase from my 2017 MacBook Pro. And ever since 2015, I've been editing off of MacBook Pros. I had a 2014 MacBook Pro that lasted me four years. And then now I have my 2017 MacBook Pro, which is back here and they're full specs, 16 gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte SSD, pretty much standard stuff. And it worked for a while, but since working on the C70 and then doing the field trips, just the whole process is a lot slower than I'd like it to be. So fast forward, the M1 Max are released and there was hype and speculation about it for a while. And I didn't really pay attention to it because I don't like chasing trends. I upgrade my stuff when I need to. And after seeing tons of videos about the M1 Mac Mini, I started to get more interested. So I ended up buying the M1 Mac Mini fully spec'd out. And the reason for that is because with the amount of work that I have coming in and the C70 files, the big projects, everything is just bogging down my computer. And I needed something that was a little more optimized, that runs really well, and ultimately brings in more power for a pretty good price. For the first few months of working with Sam, we were using my Pocket 6K and everything was working pretty fine. But these C70 files now are pretty heavy, but it's worth it, but they are really heavy. And editing a 40 minute long video just really bogged down my laptop and the fans would turn on immediately. It was always super slow. The portability was nice, but I'm spending a lot of my time editing now at my desk here or at Sam's studio. So yeah, a few weeks ago, I finally pulled the trigger on it and I've had some time to run some projects through to give you guys some insight on why me, a cinematographer and editor, bought that one Mac mini in 2021. So I'm not gonna go deep into specs, but I got it fully spec'd out. 16 gigabytes of RAM, I wouldn't go less than that. I got the terabyte SSD, which I wouldn't really go more than that either. I, I say it's fully spec'd, but I think you can go up to like two or four, whatever, one's enough for me. And then I got the 10 gigabit ethernet port because here at home and then at Sam's studio, we run everything through ethernet and just having a 10 gigabit ethernet, it's just really nice to have. It's lightning fast and I'm really happy that I went that route. So I have a couple different sections of workflows that I've noticed working at this M1 Mac mini. But from the day-to-day -day workflow, just normal apps, Safari, Notion, Notes, Spotify, really anything, it is extremely fast. When I turn it on, it turns on immediately. Every app opens up immediately as well. And I even went on my MacBook to transfer some files and that MacBook felt super slow. So this computer is optimized really well and it's a breeze to work with. And I even wrote out the script while exporting out a handful of videos. And I was not able to do that on my MacBook Pro. When my MacBook Pro was exporting, it was pretty much done for the day. I would go out for a run or go work out, or go do something else because I couldn't use my computer. But now while I'm exporting, I'm still able to get some stuff done, just really upping my productivity and just giving me a better use of my time and being more efficient with what I'm doing. So the main reason why I bought this computer is for editing. And I bought it knowing that I'm going to be editing tons of videos with videos sprinkled in that are probably 40 minutes to 60 minutes long. And I've had a bunch of people ask me, is this going to be a workhorse computer? And I can honestly and confidently say, Yes, it's going to be my workhorse computer. I don't need proxies for the C70 anymore. It runs extremely well. I can watch it back in 4K at full speed with slight color. And honestly, that's all you need. I mean, that's all that I need. I don't need anything that can run 8K raw full speed with color. Like that's kind of asking for too much, I think. So far, this M1 Mac Mini has been blowing me away with editing and it's been really nice. The fans have never turned on. I'm actually exporting a video right now and you can't hear the fans. 
If you hear anything, it's the disk drives from the GTEC drives. They're kind of noisy, but I've exported out the field trips videos just as a test and the fans have not turned on once. Right now I'm editing inside of Resolve and Resolve is optimized for M1. I don't think Premiere is yet. I know Final Cut runs really well just from what I've seen, but if you're a Resolve editor or a Premiere editor that's kind of considering Resolve and an M1 Mac Mini, I feel like Resolve in the M1 Mac Mini is a great match. So for the export times, I've seen some graphs and some videos talking about the specs of this. I don't really care too much about export times, but I ran a test between my two computers with the same project and the M1 Mac Mini was 10 minutes faster. And that was for an hour long video. So 10 minutes, okay, whatever, like it's not the end of the world. The main thing about exporting on this computer is that I'm actually able to use it while it's exporting. On my MacBook Pro, I wasn't able to do anything on it. I wasn't even able to watch YouTube or listen to music. I'd have to go do something else for however long that video took. But now on my M1 Mac Mini, I'm able to script out a video. I'm able to watch YouTube, listen to music. So yeah, I don't really care that it's not like 300% faster. At the end of the day, I'm not churning out multiple videos per day. So export times aren't the end of the world. So some issues that I've ran into. I haven't ran into the Bluetooth issues like most people have, but I've had one weird issue that I haven't seen before. And because I have my LG Ultrafine here, I have a bunch of USB-C ports and I have all my hard drives running through that. And there's been a couple of times where it says, unplug the USB port or unplug the USB hardware that's taking all the power. And all my drives disconnect until I disconnect that one drive. And it's super bizarre. It's only happened twice, but it hasn't happened in a couple weeks. I'm not sure why that is. It might be from like me daisy chaining a bunch of drives, but I'm exporting out a project with, I think four drives attached. So I'm not really sure what's going on there. So the portability of this machine is honestly really nice. Like I said, I have an LG Ultrafine here and Sam has an LG Ultrafine 5K at the studio. And before I bought the Mac mini, I was taking my laptop to and from home to the studio, but now I'm taking my Mac mini to the studio. And honestly, it's not bad. I still have all my hard drives in my little peak design pouch. All I need is one cable, like my laptop charger. I just have the one power cable and then my Mac mini. But honestly, I don't mind bringing it to and from the studio. I have it set up in a spot where it's really easy to take off and to put back and same at Sam's studio. I just plug it in, plug in the one Thunderbolt three cord and we're good to go. And yeah, like I said, we're going to Alaska soon. So I'm bringing my MacBook Pro up there to archive footage and pull selects and really just keep everything organized. And that's why I'm keeping my MacBook Pro. I could have sold it off for a little bit of cash to honestly probably pay for this computer, but the portability is really nice, especially if I need to work away from home. So for peripherals, I'm using pretty much all Apple products. Like I said, the LG Ultrafine, it's optimized well for Mac OS. You're able to hit your keyboard and dim everything it just works really well. I have the Apple trackpad, I have the Apple magic mouse and the Apple keyboard. I think they're all the updated newer versions. They work really well. And then I have my Sony, I think 7506 editing headphones and I just bought an audio interface. So I'm able to have a headphone port on my desk. And that's been really nice. Instead of using the speakers from the LG Ultrafine, I plan on getting studio monitors at some point. Besides that, for storage, I have all my SSDs, the SanDisk Extremes, the Samsung T5s. I have four or five GTEC drives daisy chained into the Thunderbolt 3 port on my Mac Mini. If you're looking for a monitor, I highly recommend these LG Ultrafines. They're pretty good. I haven't had any issues with it. The panels are super clean. The color seems to be pretty accurate. I was looking at the BenQ, I think it's the PD3200U, something like that. But for $1,000, I wasn't really feeling that. I got my monitor re refurbished for like 500 and it's really nice. One cable in, you get a bunch of different ports and for the Mac mini, I feel like that's a pretty good combo. So who should be buying this M1 Mac mini? If you're doing anything creative, I think it's a pretty good option that you can't really pass up on. If you're a video guy that's having a little bit of hesitation with this computer for editing, believe me and trust me, I am editing a ton of videos on this and I'm trusting this to be my main workhorse of a computer and I've already put a handful of videos through it so far and it's been so much nicer to work on. Yeah, 32 gigs of RAM would be nice, but I think 16 is enough, especially because of how well optimized everything is. 16 is pretty much the gold standard for me and I've been pretty happy with it so far. So you guys might be thinking, why didn't you wait for the new pros? Why'd you buy the normal M1 Mac right now? So again, I don't usually like chasing trends and waiting for the next new thing, because I think if you're waiting for the next new thing, you won't be happy, you won't be satisfied, you'll always be waiting for that next upgrade. I took a step back and looked at my workload 
and I saw that I'm going to be busy all throughout summer. And I think the new pros are supposed to be coming out mid to late summer. And honestly, I don't have four or five months to waste <laughs> editing on my crappy MacBook. It's, it's good, it's decent, but it's still too slow. And after getting this normal M1 Mac, I am so happy that I made that decision to buy it now because now my workflow is just so much nicer. It's way nicer to edit. It just makes my life a lot easier. And I look forward to editing because of how smooth it is. So maybe down the road in a year or two, maybe I'll sell us off and just get that upgrade to get like 32 gigs of RAM or whatever they offer. But I don't think I'll be buying one anytime soon. This will probably be my main computer for the next few years. Trust me, this computer is insane. It's lightning fast. If you're considering it, I highly recommend it. You won't be bummed. If you're super picky and really want these high specs, sure, wait for the new one. But if you're like me who doesn't really care about that, that just wants something that works really well, that makes their workflow more efficient and faster, you can't go wrong with this new M1 Mac Mini. Yeah, like this video if you enjoyed. Comment down below if you're considering it or if you bought it. I'd love to know your thoughts. Subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.